Hey everyone, today I'll be showing you how to group and ungroup in Power Apps, most commonly in the gallery, where you have a list of items and you'd like to group them and ungroup them based off certain columns. So here I have a list of sales data with the sales rep and sales, and what I'd like to do is group on the sales rep to see the total sales and also be able to show all their sales. So for example, I have Max Money who has a lot of sales this year, and if I want to press the minus button, it sort of hides all their sales and gives me the total. And if I wanted to expand further, it would be like a pivot table and sort of expand for me. So I want to start off with a screen looking like this, where you have the columns and the gallery with the uh, fields that are relevant to you. And I want you to pick out a column that you're going to group by. I'm going to group by sales rep, but you can also group by region and other columns that are so commonly found in your table. Now, y you must note that you have to have an ID or a specific or unique identifier for the items in your gallery or and in your um, table. So let's get started. So in the gallery, normally people reference the sh SharePoint list or SQL table directly, but what we're going to do is need a collection. So normally people do it to sort on and and like let's say sales rep is to say sort sales by sales rep and ascending and now you can see I have a list of all the sales reps ascending and this helps me sort of group and ungroup them better but let's take that so let's copy that and insert a button I'm going to call this button get data or whatever you'd like and this will run when the screen starts on the invisible property here of the screen. You'll run this formula here. But just in our purposes, we're going to go to the button and paste it. And before that, clear collect into our collection sales data. That's what I'm going to call my collection. And I'm going to reference the collection in the gallery, like so. And when I press get data, it's going to be exactly like the collection itself. And now next step is to do is sort of um, add that plus minus icon to sort of group and ungroup. So let's do that. So let's insert our uh, add icon. And it's not really an add in the beginning. It's more so a uh, minus. So you can actually open up the icon list here and go to horizontal line. And that'll give us a horizontal icon sort of for the minus. And what you'll see here is I don't want to have it repeating. So how do I do that? So I only want it to show up for the first item. So on the visible property, I'm going to say this item.id has to equal lookup call sales data, my collection, where the sales rep equals this item.sales rep, and then give me its ID. So basically, this will look up the first item that matches a sales rep. You can see, so it'll match this Brittany with the ID 10 and give it uh, only show it for there. See, it's not going to show up for this one because it's only found the first one. But you can see here, it's also showing for Bruce and Matt, Mike. And they don't have any items underneath them. There's just one sales for the year. They're pretty lacking. So we don't want to show the minus sign for them because there's nothing to minus or group and ungroup because they're already showing the total. So what we'll also do is add another condition and count if, so we're going to count how many sales they've made, call sales data, sales rep is equal to this item dot sales rep, it has to be greater than one. So meaning they, more, they made more than one sale, so this should show up. So hopefully this formula helps. Basically, it will rep only get the first ID, uh, person's ID and show it if that's it. And also, this they must have more than one sales. So now we've made the minus sign show up for only the relevant people. Now what I want to do is when I click it, basically hide this, hide my records, and show the total here for sales. So what we're going to do is on the on select of the icon, I'm going to collect, call collapse expand group. And I'm going to collect this item. That's it. And now, 
if I play the app and click it, not much happens, but let me double click and highlight the collapse group. It has my record here, maybe duplicate because I clicked it two times. See, it has the my, my sales rep with my sales, right? So what do I want to do? Now I have it in my record. I want to basically filter it out of this gallery and hide these two rows. So in the items property, we're going to add a filter and it's going to be if the sales rep is exactly in call collapse expand group, my collection, where if I click the minus sign, it adds it to the collection dot sales rep, then don't show it, otherwise show it. And now you can see if I press the minus button, my name goes away. I'm outside the list. But I don't want that entirely because now how am I going to add myself back and also it's not showing the total for my name, right? So I want that first row to be there still. So we're going to add another condition here. We're going to say, and this and my ID is not, is exact in call collapse expand group dot ID. And this is going to be a not. Okay. And not ID exact in call collapse expand group dot ID, which means we want it to show hide all the sales reps that we've just added with this minus button, but also don't hide that ID that we just added, this ID one, right? Okay, now we've got, um, now when I press it, you can see it, it subtracts it, but only leaves the first row, but I actually want this to turn into a plus sign so I can expand it again. So let's take, let's copy this first part where we have the sales rep in that there. So let's go to the icon property and basically if the sales rep is in our collapse group, which means we press the minus button, we want icon dot add. Otherwise we want icon dot horizontal line. And it's not sales rep, it's this item dot sales rep. Okay. Now you can see I have a plus and a minus. Now I want to go to the on select and when I click the plus I want it to not collect but remove from this call collect expand group. So if self dot icon equals icon dot add then I want it to remove if call collapse expand group and normally people do remove with this item that works too but sometimes I feel like this doesn't really work this remove so I like to use remove if and just say the ID equals this item dot ID that'll do its job too or the sales rep equal this item dot sales rep whatever field you can do it on and now if I press the plus it expands if I press minus it collapses same for all the others sort of order it out looks very nice when you actually play around and make it a little prettier and it's very intuitive for the users to actually, you know, mess around with. Now we're going to mess around with this sales because you can see it's still giving the sales of the first one. We don't want that. We want the total sales. So to do that, we're just going to reference this little icon right here. And we're going to basically say, if it's a plus, I want it to sum all these. If it's a minus, I just want it to be as, as is. So we're going to say, if the icon dot icon is a icon dot add. I'm going to add my, I'm going to copy this bottom one right here, put it here, and the text will not be total sales, but it will contain some filter call sales data. So I want to filter the call sales data with a sales rep equals this item dot sales rep to get all the sales reps information, and I want to sum the total sales from them. Not this item dot total sales. You got to be careful. You don't want to sum this item dot total sales. You want to sum the sales of this filter that you got. And now, if I play the app, you can see it actually sums up to be 406,000, which is the accurate amount. Let's go to a different one. So Max Money has a lot of money apparently. So yeah, one million, seven hundred thousand for Peter and you, for Bruce and Mad Mike. We don't need the group and ungroup because what are we in a total, right? Robert, yeah, it seems to be adding up really well. 
and it's really cool to play with. Now one thing you might want to ask to really also further enhance this is what if I want to expand and collapse all of them at the same time, right? That's a little that's a little cool feature, you know? So let's add that. Let's add a little icon. Let's just let's just give it this, you know? Let's add it to the top. And just like this button does, we're going to if we want to uh basically uh, shrink or minimize everything, which means un uh, expand everything, we're going to say clear our call collapse group. And when I click this, it expands everything. You can see. But what if I want to group everything, meaning collapse everything? So let me comment this out. It just takes two forward slashes to comment. Instead of that, what we're going to do is basically take this collect function right here and we're going to need to basically say because uh, the problem is we, we can we only want to collect the first one what this gives me this huge formula basically I I'm going to get a distinct of the sales rep so all the sales reps one time only so Brittany once max money once and for the ID I want to get the first ID that's why I use the lookup. And I basically pulled, uh, look up the sales rep one time and get its ID and then the, the sales rep itself from the distinct. And I have this if condition here saying if it's, if the call collapse group is empty, then go ahead and collect everyone. So it groups everyone. And if it's not empty, then clear the call collapse group, meaning uh, expand everything. So if I click this, see how it minimizes everything. If I click it again, it expands everything. And if I sort of minimize a few things, it expands everything like so. That's a little more complex, but I hope that helps. And I hope this video helped you uh, in, in your endeavors and your challenges that you're facing. I really found this feature useful for one of my um, financial statements that I'm making for another app. And I thought it'd be useful to you guys if you wanted a feature where you had the ability to you know, play around and make the gallery a bit more flexible to your needs and make it sort of like that pivot table that is in Excel and this group and ungroup feature uh, where it originated from. So thanks so much for watching. I hope this helped. Please leave any com anything in your comments. I'll be happy to look at it, uh, make videos about it. Thanks so much.